We're now going to talk about how we find the domain of composite functions. And it's similar to finding combined functions, where we get two different domains and then take the intersection of them. But it works a little bit differently. So suppose we're doing f composed with g of x. What we do first is we find the domain of g of x, the first function. And then that's going to change things. So we're going to use that to find the domain we're going to use g of x to find the domain of f of g of x. We're going to plug g of x in and then work through it to see if we can find our domain. Once we've done that, we're going to take the intersection of those two domains. So, let's look at an example. Suppose that f of x is the square root of x plus 1 and g of x is the square root of x minus 3 the first thing we do is find the domain of g of x. So we take the inside, x minus 3, and set that greater than or equal to 0. Add 3 to both sides. x is greater than or equal to 3, which means we get a domain of 3 to infin infinity. That's domain 1. 2, we find the domain of f of x sorry, not f of x, f of g of x. So we take this, and wherever we see an x, we replace it with g of x. So we get the square root of g of x plus 1, which says that g of x plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. Or g of x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. We replace g of x with what it is. The square root of x minus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 1. And remember that the radical symbol always returns the principal root, and the principal root is always greater than or equal to 0. Well, something that's always greater than or equal to 0 is always going to be greater than a negative. So the domain here is actually, domain 2, is actually from minus infinity to infinity. So step 3, we take domain 1 and we intersect it with domain 2. So we want to know, here's 0, 1, 2, 3. When is this the same as this? And that's this piece right here. So the domain of the whole thing is 3 to infinity. Now that changes if we also change our order. So if we want to do this as g composed with f of x instead of f composed with g of x, then our first step is actually to start by looking at f of x. So let's find the domain of f of x. So we take x plus 1, set that greater than or equal to 0. So x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and we go from negative 1 to infinity. Step 2, we want the domain of g composed with f of x, which is f of x minus 3 underneath the radical. So f of x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. f of x is greater than or equal to 3. Square root of x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 3. Well, in order to get rid of this, since they're both positive, we'll square both sides. x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 9. Subtract 1, and we get x is greater than or equal to 8 where we go from 8 to infinity. So this was d1, and this is d2. Step 3, we take d1, intersect it with d2. So d1 says we go from minus 1 up to infinity, and d2 says we go from 8 to infinity. And the only region that's true for both is from 8 to infinity, so this is my domain of g composed with f. And that's how we find our domain.